Okay, everybody, this is a linear algebra course for computer science students at Marmo University. Uh, I hope you're all doing fine. Uh, please try to be safe and stay at home. Okay, so this is today I'm gonna uh, present you the material from week 5, which is about the determinant of a matrix. Um, our sections will include uh, section 3.1, which is about the um, definition of determinant, and in section 3.2 we will talk about some properties of determinant, but we will not finish uh, the section 3.2 today. Okay, so uh, we will first uh, talk about the uh, determinant of a 2x2 two two matrix. Okay, so for this matrix uh, A, we define its determinant as this product here. So you see uh, A11 entry times A22 entry minus A12 entry times A21 entry. Okay? So for example, uh, for this matrix A, uh, its determinant is you see uh, A11 times A22 minus A12 times uh, a21 and the final answer will be 22 okay so for right now we're just uh, interested in the definition and we will talk about what this determinant means um, later okay now let's uh, uh, define the determinant of 3 by 3 matrices okay so in this case the formula is uh, you see it's a little bit more complicated here uh, so instead of memorizing this formula, there is an easy way to remember it, which is called uh, the Serres rule. Okay, Serres rule. So this, uh, I should warn you that this uh, works for for three by three determinants, but this method will not work for, for example, four by four matrices or five by five matrices. Okay, so. <coughs> How, do we, how does the Serres rule work? Okay, so you first write the first column of the matrix here. Okay. You, you first write the first column of the matrix here, and then the second column of the matrix here, and then the third column. And then you repeat the first column and the second columns. Okay. And then you uh, take this product. You take the product of uh, these entries first. Uh, you see here and then take the product of these entries and then product of these entries these are with po this, these come with positive signs and now you switch the order and you look at these uh, dashed uh, lines you see so this comes with a negative sign uh, which one is this so it is this one and this one comes with a negative sign which one is this this one and this one comes with negative sign. Okay, so this rule uh, gives you the uh, how to compute the uh, three by three determinants. So let's uh, do it on an example. Okay, so let me uh, repeat this here. So we have this uh, determinant. So okay, so I should say that when we uh, mesh determinant, uh, the way to show it is these uh, uh, straight lines, okay? So straight lines will denote determinant, okay? So you see this is different from these uh, brackets, okay? So these show matrix and these show determinant. Okay, so let us use this uh, Serres rule. So I write the first column, then the second column, and then the third column, okay? And then repeat the first column, and then repeat the second column. Okay, so first I go this way. If I go this way, you see if I take the product, I will get uh, basically a zero, right? Because there's a zero there, and then I uh, look at this diagonal, which will which will give me three times five times minus one, which is minus fifteen, and then I go to the uh, 
third diagonal, which is this one, which gives me 7 times 5 times 5, which is uh, plus 175. Now I look at the cross diagonal, the, the off diagonal, the other direction, okay? So in the other direction, uh, first I compute this one. Uh, let me use a different color. Uh, let's see with this one. So if I look at this one, what do I get? 7 times 6 times minus 1. So it is minus 42, but it comes with a minus sign. So minus minus 42 is 42. And then we compute this one, which gives me 0 plus 0. Or minus 0 doesn't matter, right? So, and finally, I have this uh, diagonal, which gives me uh, 15 times 5, which is 75, but it comes with a minus sign. So if I do this computation, at the end, I will get this result. Okay. Okay, so now we want to define uh, the determinant of uh, n by n matrices. Okay, so how do we do that? Uh, this is a little bit more technical, so the first step is we consider we define a set as n. Okay? It is uh, the set of all integers from 1 to n. For example, S2 is a set with two elements, 1 and 2. S3 is the set with three elements starting from 1, 2, 3. Okay? Okay, so we call, now we define something called uh, the permutation uh, of uh, Sn. How do we do that? Uh, so we consider um, an ordering of the elements of, uh, all the elements of Sn uh, with no repetition, okay? So there is no repetition. Okay, so for example, permutations, so okay. Let's look at this example. So the permutations of the set S2, which is uh, the set S2 is these two elements. Its permutations are, there are only two permutations. It's either one and two or two and one, okay? There are no other uh, permutations. For example, the permutations of the set S3 are one, two, three, two, three, one, three, one, two, uh, 1, 3, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3, okay? So, you see, uh, the set Sn has a total of n factorial permutations. For example, for S2, if you look at it, there are two permutations, and for S3, uh, there are uh, six permutations, right? Okay, now, uh, let's uh, define what is an immersion. Uh, a permutation is said to have an immersion if a larger integer comes before a smaller integer. Okay, so, and also we define uh, even and odd permutation. So if the total number of immersions is even, then the permutation is called even, otherwise it is called. Now let's look at uh, the permutations of S2 again. So we said that there are two permutations, 1, 2, and 2, 1. Okay. Now, you see there are no immersions here, right? There are zero immersions here, so uh, this is an even permutation. How about the permutation 2, 1? Well, 2, 1, uh, you see 2 comes before 1, so it has exactly one immersion, okay? So this permutation is odd. Let's look at S3. Okay, we said it has six permutations, right? Six permutations. Let's, let's uh, see if they're even or odd. Now the first permutation is this one and uh, there are no integers, uh, large integers coming uh, before smaller integers. So this one is even. Uh, for this one, okay, so two comes before one, there is one inversion and also three comes before one. So there is there are two immersions, right? Two immersions. So this is uh, again an odd. Uh, uh, this is a, this is again an even uh, permutation. How about uh, three one two? Okay, let's look at that. So three comes before one. Three comes before two. 
and there's again two inversions so this is also in uh, you can check that the other uh, inversion the other permutations are odd for example for this one there's uh, exactly one inversion For this one, there are one, two, three immersions, right? Three immersions. And for this one, two comes before one, and two comes before three, so there are uh, exactly two, uh, uh, one, two, No, two comes before one, so there is exactly one inversion, I'm sorry. So these uh, permutations are odd. Uh, finally, let's give an example from S4, which is a set of uh, integers from one to four. So uh, let's look at this permutation. So for this permutation, four is greater than one, four is greater than three, four is greater than two, Right, so these all give rise to an inversion, and also three is um, three is greater than two. So uh, we have four inversions, and this is an even uh, permutation. Okay, now we are ready to uh, define the determinant of a general square matrix. Matrix. Okay, so uh, I want to stress here that we define the determinant only for square matrices. Okay. So how is it defined? So it is uh, the determinant is a sum of product of entries of A. Okay. So you see if if I zoom here, you see uh, so each of these elements come from uh, so the first element comes from the first row, the second element comes from the second row, and the nth element comes from uh, the nth row. Okay. So there are n elements here. And the column numbers j1, j2, uh, dot, 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 jn, these are um, uh, the um, are all permutations. Okay, so j1 to jn is a permutation of the set one to n. Okay, and how would it, how do we determine this these signs uh, either plus or negative? So we uh, determine it. Uh, we def uh, we determine it. Uh, uh, by checking that whether this permutation is even or odd, okay? So, <clears throat> uh, it may look uh, a little bit complicated, but uh, let's verify that it matches with, uh, with our uh, previous uh, definition of determinant for 3x3 three three matrices, okay? So, this is the exact uh, the same determinant that uh, we computed um, in previous slides, okay? So this is a three by three matrix, matrix and we know that uh, its positive permutations are given like this. Okay, so we uh, talked about it in, in the previous slide and the negative permutations are given by this. Okay, now you see the determinant is, okay, so it's a, it's a sum of products and each product has exactly three terms, right? So each product has three terms um, and uh, each term comes from a different row. So, for example, this the first entry is from the first row, the second uh, element is from the second, third is from the third. Same for all of them. Okay, so coming from the first row, second row, third row, first row, second row, third row, first row, second row, third row, blah blah blah. And how are the uh, how about the column uh, numbers? Well, we use these. Uh, column numbers. We use these as column numbers, okay? So let me erase this uh, thing. Okay. So for example, uh, I first look at uh, this one. I write this here. This has the second column number. This has the third column number. Since this is a, a positive permutation, it comes with a positive sign. And the same is true for this entry. Okay. So two comes here, three comes here, one comes here, and it comes with a positive sign. And similarly here. So it's again a positive uh, permutation. Okay, now let's look at the negative uh, permutations. So 
This is a negative permutation, so it will be coming. Oh, let me get that again. So it's coming here. Three is coming here, and two is coming here, and two, one, and three. Okay, so it goes like this. I don't want to write all of them here. So if you do this computation, you will see that at the end uh, you will get the same result. Okay. Okay, so as, as an exercise, you can uh, look at these problems from your textbook. And uh, now we're done with section 3.1. Let's look at section 3.2. Okay, so here we will list some properties of the determinant. Uh, we will not prove all of them. Uh, some of the proofs are in the textbook, uh, and we will prove some of them. Uh, but I will give some examples for each one. Okay, so our first rule is uh, regarding the determinant of the transpose matrix. So you see the determinant of a transpose of a matrix is the same as the determinant of the matrix itself. So let's look at this for a 2 by 2 case. So if I have this A, B, C, D matrix, I know that it's determinant of this times this minus this times this, which is A, D minus B, C. And let's look at the transpose matrix. Uh, the transpose matrix uh, is this matrix, and you see its determinant is AD minus CB, which is the same as this one. Okay? So you can check this for uh, 3 by 3 matrix as well. Okay? Uh, now, our second property, our second property is uh, regarding this uh, row swap. Okay? So if we swap two rows of a matrix, then its determinant uh, is the same except for a minus sign. Okay? So, for example, for a 2 by 2 matrix, if I swap these two rows, okay, so I write this uh, CD, the second row, instead of the first row, and the first row instead of the second row, uh, you see this is AD minus BC. Let me write it. This equals AD, AD minus BC, and this equals what? CB minus AD. So this one is, uh, you see, equals to this one, except for a minus sign. Okay? Okay, our next property is if two rows or two columns of a matrix are equal, then its determinant must be zero, okay? So you see this is uh, very useful. For example, if you look at this matrix, uh, the determinant of this matrix must be zero because these two rows are equal. Or if you look at uh, this three by three determinant, then this must be zero. Why? Because the first row and the second, uh, I'm sorry, third row are equal, okay? So what is the proof? Well, the proof is very easy. So if we suppose that uh, two rows are equal, row i and row j, uh, which are, of course, uh, different rows, then if I do a row swap here, then the matrix does not change because uh, row i and row j are equal. If I swap them, the matrix won't change. So uh, since the matrix does not change, its determinant should not change, right? So determinant A must be the same as determinant of A with row i and row j swapped. But in the previous slide, we have seen that this determinant is the negative of determinant. So what does it mean? It means, you see, a number here equals the negative of itself. So which number can it be? There is only one such number, which is 0. OK, so uh, this is also, recall that this is also true for columns. If two columns of A are equal, then determinant is 0. Why? Well, because if you take the transpose of the matrix, then we know that the determinant does not change. But uh, suddenly, rows becomes columns. So if uh, this rule is true for rows, it should be true also for uh, columns. Now let's go to the next slide. Okay, so 
Next property says if a row or a column is um, entirely zero, then determinant must be zero. Okay, so let's look at this example. So we see a row which has all zeros, consisting of all zeros, okay? So this must be zero automatically. No need to compute this. Okay, so the proof is uh, comes from really the, the sum formula of the determinant. So if we uh, remember it, uh, in the sum formula, um, it's, a, it's a sum of products of um, elements of A, and each product uh, uh, always have exactly one element from each row or each column. Okay, so if it, since each uh, product there has an um, element from the third row, each product must be zero. Okay, that's that's really the proof. And the next property is again it's about um, uh, the determinant of uh, an elementary row operation applied to the matrix. Okay, what is this elementary operation? So I'm uh, replacing row i with a k times row y, and k is non zero number here. Okay. So its effect on determinant is, is the same determinant multiplied by k. Okay, let's look at this example. For example, uh, if I look at this determinant, so what is this? k a times d minus k b times c. Okay, so if I take this into k parentheses, I get this one. But this part is exactly this determinant, right? So it's k times the determinant of this matrix. Okay, so the final property that uh, we're going to discuss today is about this third row element row operation, which is uh, replacing row i with row i plus a multiple of row j. Okay, in this case, uh, the determinant does not change. Okay, so let's look at the last example here. So if I have a matrix whose determinant is 4, and if I do this operation on the uh, matrix, replacing row 1 with row 1 plus 2 times row 2, then the determinant will not change. Okay, so D must have the same determinant. And uh, let's look at the first example here. So you see, uh, if I start with this matrix and do this uh, elementary row operation, which is K times uh, replacing the second row, with k times uh, uh, second row plus k times row one, then I get this matrix. And if I compute the determinant of this matrix, I get this part. And if I do the algebra here, what is this? So you see there will be cancellations, right? So a times k times b plus a times d minus b times k times a minus b c. Okay, so these two terms will cancel, and we get exactly the same result, AD minus BC. Okay, so the final example, let's look at this one. Uh, so if we start with this matrix, and if we add twice the second row to the first row, okay, so what, what happens? We get... Uh, 5 here, we get 2 times this plus this, 0, 2 times this, 6 plus this, 9, okay? And we know that the determinant will not change. But you see this matrix will be easier to compute than this, uh, determinant of this one is easier to compute than this one. Why? Because uh, this column has uh, more zeros. So if you look at the determinant formula, uh, you see only the terms uh, for which a22 is non-zero are uh, necessary because the other products will only give zero. Okay, so I leave it to you to compute uh, this determinant and find this number four.